I received a review copy of Berg Appenzell from the publisher, thanks to Zoch Verlag. A 3D castle contained within the game box, with sliding floors, removable pieces, and lots of cheese. Our mice are trying to collect the cheese while avoiding the traps, which could see them plummeting into the depths of the dungeon. Table presence, memory, and just a touch of the classic labyrinth in a strategy game for families. That's the hook. I'm Adam Porter. I design games and review them with a particular focus on product design. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, and hit like. Berg Appenzell is a 2022 re-release of a multi-award winning family game from 2007. In many countries the game is known as Chateau Rockfort, but the German original was named after a different Swiss cheese, Appenzell. It's a 2-4 player game for ages 6 and up, playing in around 30 minutes. In Berg Appenzell, players attempt to collect four different types of cheese. You collect a cheese whenever you have two of your mice standing on matching cheese tiles. But the cheeses move around. Once per turn, a player may choose to push a tile into the grid, shifting all the other tiles in that row or column. You have four action points to use on your turn, and only one of them can be spent on shifting tiles. Alternatively, you can move a mouse for one action point, bring a new mouse into a tower, one action point, or remove a roof to reveal the tiles beneath, one action point. But the roofs are replaced at the end of your turn, unless the room is occupied by a mouse. So you're going to need to remember which cheeses were located where. Finally, you mustn't ignore the traps. A shifting row of tiles could send your mice plummeting into a pit. If three of your mice are lost in this way, you're out of the game. The winner is the first player to gather four different cheeses. Berg Appenzell is certainly an eye-catching game. The first challenge in onboarding is getting your product noticed, and Berg Appenzell excels here. The designers, Jens Peter Schliemann and Bernhard Weber, are veterans of the family game genre. They often use high concept ideas, as illustrated by Schliemann's Nacht de Magie, which is played in pitch black with glow-in-the-dark components. Schliemann also frequently makes use of the vertical plane, bringing a third dimension to his games. Schleiman and Weber's recent Kinderspiel des Jahres winner, Magic Mountain, sees players sending marbles sliding down a maze, activating the playing pieces that they touch. And Schleiman's most recent collaboration with Zoch, Piazza da Bazza, has you playing as a pizza boy, carrying metal pizzas through a shaking magnetic city in an attempt to deliver pizzas to specific customers shown on your objective tiles. I love games which use the box as part of the gameplay. iSchool did it brilliantly in 2016, creating an arena to flick your penguins around in. Pika Mouse from Gigamic turned the box into an enclosed house with tiny windows you could peek through when the lights were on. The Magic Labyrinth has magnetic pieces manoeuvring metal balls around an invisible maze hidden beneath the game board. Berg Appenzell utilises the height of the box to allow for the shifting of various levels of tiles, and most importantly, to create imposing pit traps that your playing pieces can fall into. It's a very dynamic setup, a living board, and it looks amazing. The next step in onboarding is learning the rules, and there's no problem here. The rulebook is clear and easy to follow. The rules are really pretty simple and easy enough for a child to follow. The use of action points, though, does increase the complexity of the game. On your turn, you can do four actions with four possible choices. Move a mouse, bring a mouse onto the board, lift a roof, or slide tiles. Of course, you can repeat the same action multiple times, except for the sliding action. And this creates a pretty wide decision space. There are loads of different approaches you could take on your turn, and all the while you need to remember the position of the hidden cheeses and avoid the traps. It's a lot for a child to consider. I find it hard to analyse Berg Appenzell without reference to an earlier game which shares some features. Ravensburger's 80s classic, Labyrinth. In Labyrinth, players are attempting to gather treasures as indicated on a pile of cards dealt to them at the start of the game. On your turn, you push a tile from one of the board edges, shifting a row or column of tiles and manipulating the maze. You can then move your playing piece as far as you like through the maze to try to land on your chosen treasure. The first player to land on each of their treasures wins the game. The two games offer up a similar experience, but the decision space is very different. 
in Labyrinth, the turn sequence is shift tiles, then move your pawn. Berg Appenzell, the sequence is much more open. There are a wealth of options available to you, and this is great for a strategic mind, but it could be challenging for a young player. I like to analyse games using my engagement ladder system. I award 0 to 3 points in each of 5 categories, and each point climbs the game one rung up the ladder. A score of 10 or above reaches the top rung, and indicates a real favourite with me. For this review, I'm going to pit Berg Appenzell against Labyrinth, and see which comes out on top. For thematic immersion, both games rank similarly, with a score of 2. They are, of course, abstract puzzles, really, but they manage to be immersive regardless. The fantastical setting, collecting treasure in Labyrinth, or cheese in Berg Appenzell, and you do get drawn into the weird little world of these playing pieces in their disorientating, ever-shifting mazes. It's particularly gutting to see one of your mice fall into the depths of the castle dungeon. Both games are heavy on interaction, with opportunities to mess up your opponent's plans on every turn. The interference can be accidental or deliberate, but in Berg Appenzell, it's more meaningful because a mean-spirited move by your opponent can eliminate one of your mice permanently. This is certainly the harsher of the two games. Now, whether that's a positive or a negative is a matter of taste. Kids will howl with laughter when Dad's mouse falls into the hole, but there's certainly lots of scope for arguments between siblings if one player feels targeted or singled out. Stress and challenge is higher in Berg Appenzell too. This is partly because of the previously mentioned opportunities for interference by your opponents, but the tension is also cranked up by the memory mechanism. Lifting a roof is always fraught with tension just in case you've made a mistake, misremembered, or worse still, just in case you reveal a pit trap in prime position for your opponents to utilise. Feedback is moderate in both games. When you achieve your goal, you claim a token. It happens more frequently in Labyrinth, so the game feels a bit more generous, but the satisfaction of knocking an opponent into a pit trap in Berg Appenzell more than compensates, so both score two for feedback. I've already discussed the relative decision space for each game, the choices available to players. Berg Appenzell is certainly the more strategic game. The use of action points was a mechanism frequently utilised by game designers in the late 90s and the early 2000s, most notably by the prolific pairing of Kramer and Kiesling in their Mask trilogy, Tikal, Mexica, Java, and related games. As a mechanism, it's fallen out of favour a little over recent years because the decision space can be overwhelming and can really slow down a player's turn. I've always been a fan of these games, despite the slightly torturous pacing. And the issue isn't pronounced in Berg Appenzell. You only have four action points per turn. But it's still a lot for children to consider. This rating system is calibrated to my personal tastes as an adult gamer. And hence, the increased decision space is a benefit. But for youngsters, it might actually be of detriment to the product. Nonetheless, Berg Appenzell once again pips Labyrinth 2 to 1. The overall scores are 8 for Labyrinth and 11 for Berg Appenzell. But within my system, I do make deductions for elements which reduce engagement. I'm deducting two points from Berg Appenzell. The first is because of the fiddly components. Layers upon layers of tiles are a chore to set up and to put away. The second deduction relates to the roof lifting mechanism. At the end of each turn, roofs are returned to the board covering empty rooms. It's very easy to forget to do this, and it breaks the flow of the game. It's also really tough to remember what's going on under those roofs, with so many tiles shifting around. There are moments where I find myself longing for the simplicity of Labyrinth. With deductions, Berg Appenzell totals 9 points, 1 point higher than Labyrinth. But frankly, the choice between the two games should really be made based on the age and experience of the players. Labyrinth is more suitable for younger players, Berg Appenzell is more challenging, and both could be extremely engaging games for the right age group. Moving on to my product design checklist, is Berg Appenzell innovative? Well, it's hard to make a judgement on this 15 years after the game's initial release. I will say, I'm not aware of many more games using the sliding tiles mechanism. They're probably out there, but I haven't come across them. Berg Appenzell certainly features creative and intelligent choices, both in terms of its gameplay and its presentation. 
does the game deliver on its promises? Well, I'm not sure that Berg Appenzell makes an overt promise with its box cover. The cover art hasn't changed since its original 2007 release, and it tells us nothing about the gameplay. The box indicates the setting, a castle made of cheese, but that's not really the hook of the game. I think it would have benefited from a refresh. It's a substantial box for a children's game, Zoc's standard big box equivalent to a Ticket to Ride box size. And frankly, the game warrants it. The box is well utilised with some great components, and the back of the box sells the concept well. Is there a need for a product like this? Well, I for one am glad to see the game back on the market after a fair few years where it was hard to find. It's always good to find well-presented, intriguing games for kids, which will keep adults engaged too. Berg Appenzell is a great example of this. My idea execution matrix plots a game on a grid, indicating its likely commercial success. A great product has a brilliant core idea with an outstanding gameplay execution. Labyrinth was an incredible idea back in the 80s, and Berg Appenzell utilised a similar mechanism with some fun new twists. When making games for the mass market, simpler is usually better, and the smoother flow of Labyrinth makes it more marketable. Of course, Labyrinth benefited from great timing. The game's market was much less crowded in 1986, and Ravensburger had a run of great games during this period, Scotland Yard, Enchanted Forest, and Labyrinth which cemented their place as evergreen sellers before the board game revolution began in the 90s. In 2007, when Berg Appenzell was first released, it was already considerably more challenging to get noticed among the wealth of great gaming options. And 15 years on, that challenge has increased dramatically. Labyrinth is sold in toy shops around the world and available in multiple different licensed versions. Super Mario, Harry Potter, Star Wars while Berg Appenzell is likely to remain its quirky, lesser-known cousin. But both games are worth your time and excellent products for families. If you'd like to learn about many more wonderful games for children, follow the link. Until next time, all the best.